sometimes in algebra you encounter a question like this where you have a binomial and that you need to raise it to um, some power greater than 2, like this. And so, I mean, one way we could do this is by saying x minus 2 times x minus 2 to the fourth power. Um, but then you have to do the same thing with x to the fourth power. I mean, you could write out x minus 2 times x minus 2 and do this five times times x minus 2. Um, it still doesn't really get you anywhere. So I'm going to show you a um, technique that will allow you to uh, evaluate expressions like this without having to actually sit here and do a bunch of foiling and get a huge page of scratch paper. Alright, so uh, this technique involves something called Pascal's Triangle. And Pascal's Triangle has a lot of applications in mathematics. Uh, we won't go into a lot of those, but I'll show you how it relates to algebra and expanding binomials raised to powers. So we start off with the top of Pascal's triangle just with a 1. The second row, and we'll actually we'll call this the zeroth row, so the first row is just 1, 1. After that, what you do, so starting with the second, is you say 1 on the outside, you take the two middle numbers and you add them together, and then you put a 1 on the outside. So the second row is 1, 2, 1. The third row following this pattern is 1, 1 and 2 is 3, 2 and 1 is 3, and then another 1. The fourth row here is 1, so following the same pattern, I get 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And since, uh, let's go out to the fifth power, we get 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And uh, really, you don't really memorize Pascal's triangle. I guess if you're dealing with it a lot, you might. But it's just really easy to um, come up with, just like I showed you. And you can go out as far as you need. And uh, this has a lot of applications, like I said. So applications with probability and number theory and the Fibonacci sequence and several, several other things, counting techniques and so on. Um, in particular here, so let's do an example where we said maybe we have a plus b to the fourth power. Now, um, if I expand this out, that's a plus b times itself four times, you will get something like this. Uh, some sort of missing coefficient, a to the fourth, b to the zero power. Now I know b to the zero is one, but I'm kind of doing that on purpose to show you something. Plus some something we don't know a cubed b to the first plus something we don't know a to the second b to the second. Now if you notice the uh, exponents of a are marching down the exponents on b are marching up and if you add the two exponents together you have four. So the next one would be a to the first b cubed and lastly a to the zero b to the fourth. Okay now the only thing that's missing here are these coefficients. And that's where Pascal's triangle comes in. Since I'm raising this thing to the fourth power, I want to locate here the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. And for reasons we don't really need to explain here, these become the coefficients of my expansion. And there's a little bit of work involved with this, but trust me, it saves a lot of time in the long run. All right, so let's go back to the example that we had, this x minus 2 to the fifth power, and let's use Pascal's triangle to uh, expand this. Okay, so I'm going to do this in blue here. So we say, um, we don't know the exponent, but it's going to be x to the fifth, negative 2 to the 0, plus something we don't know, x to the fourth, negative 2 to the first. Don't know the coefficient yet. It's going to be x cubed, negative 2 squared, and then x squared, negative 2 cubed, plus x to the first power, negative 2 to the fourth, and then lastly, x to the zero, and I'm almost out of room, but negative 2 to the fifth power. Okay, so let's go back to uh, our Pascal's triangle and see if that helps us figure out what our uh, missing exponents are, I mean my coefficients. And so this time I'm going down to the fifth row because remember I'm raising it to the fifth 
power. So I take the fifth row, and this sequence here is a sequence of my coefficients. So that's 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay, so cleaning this up a little bit, let's see here. That's going to be 1 times x to the fifth times negative 2 to the 0 power, which is 1. So we get x to the fifth. Then we have 5 times negative 2 to the first power, which is just negative 2, x to the fourth. Then I have 10 times negative 2 squared, which is 4, x cubed. Okay, good. And then I have 10 times negative 2 cubed, which is 8, x squared. Then I have 5 times negative 2 to the fourth, which is a positive 16, x to the first power. And then I just have a negative 2 to the fifth power, which is a negative 32. All right, so cleaning up the arithmetic then, I have x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth plus 40x cubed minus 80x squared plus 80x minus 32. All right, now it took a little bit of work, but not a lot. I mean, each of these calculations are pretty simple. This is just some basic arithmetic. Trust me, that's a lot easier than trying to weigh these waters. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. And as a bonus, um, I have a couple of examples I want you to try on your by yourself with answers. If you need help with these, just uh, let me know. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching.